indictment of 11 individuals on a 142 count RICO case involving grand theft of motor vehicles, breaking and entering, and other additional charges. The 11 individuals we indicted are as follows. Uh, Macklin Wilson, age 20. Rashid Roundtree, age 21. Kyer Allen, age 19. Demir Lyman, age 19. Willie Hicks, age 22. Kion Williams, age 20. Theon Avery, age 20. Shakir Maddox, age 21. Arthur Robinson, age 21. LeJuan Robinson, age 18, and Corey Phillips, age 18. These individuals across 11 counties in our state broke into 26 dealerships, auto dealerships, a total of 32 times. They stole 86 cars worth an worth a estimated $5.1 million. They did this over a five month period. I would like to take the time right now to personally thank the two individuals in my office who were responsible for bringing this case forward. Initially, that would be Ryan Bocach, head of our Crime Strategies Unit, as well as Prosecuting Attorney Paul Hanna, uh, who will be speaking later. They have put countless hours and weeks into this investigation and I would like to thank them for the hard work. I would also like to thank the 34 local, state and federal law enforcement agencies that worked together to put this massive case together including the Ohio Attorney General's uh, Bureau of Criminal Investigation, the Cleveland Office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the U.S. Marshals who assisted in the investigation. Of the 11 individuals indicted, nine are currently in custody. I want to th start by thanking the Cleveland Division of Police. And this is going to be a lengthy list given how many crimes they've committed, but the Euclid Police Department, the Parma Police Department, the Strongsville Police Department, the North Olmsted Police Department, the Bedford Police Department, the Solon Police Department, the Brooklyn Police Department, the Middleburg Heights Police Department, the Norton Police Department, uh, the Akron Police Department, the Copley Police Department, the Canton Police Department, the Alliance Police Department, the Ashland Police Department, the Chardon Police Department, the Dalton Police Department, the Wooster Police Department, the Malvern Police Department, the Amherst Police Department, the Willoughby Police Department, the Menor Police Department, the Painesville Police Department, the Medina Park Township Police Department, the Brunswick Division of Police, the Ravenna Police Department, and finally the Geauga County Sheriff's Department, the Medina County Sheriff's Department, Lake County Sheriff's Department, Carroll County Sheriff's Department, and the Ashland Sheriff's Department. This investigation remains ongoing, and there are other cars that were stolen that we're still trying to track and bring charges for, roughly about 40 more. As I stated earlier, there were 11 individuals indicted all between the ages of 18 and 22. These incidents occurred between November 2nd of 2022 through March 17th of 2023. And again, that's this indictment includes 86 vehicles from 26 car dealerships. Some of these dealerships were hit multiple times. Additionally, there was three residential locations that were uh, the uh, homeowners and residents were also robbed of their vehicles. Uh, these individuals have been charged with numerous felony charges, including uh, engaging in a pattern of corrupt, corrupt activity, conspiracy, aggravated theft, grand theft, and breaking and entering, among other charges. The 11 counties include, and we'll go through them, Cuyahoga County, Lorain County, Lake County, Geauga County, Medina County, Wayne County, Portage County, Ashland County, Stark County, Summit County, and Carroll County. 
as you can see, all of these counties are surrounding Cuyahoga County, and their crimes went certainly beyond our borders. Uh, with cooperation from these counties' prosecutor's office, the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office has elected to proceed uh, and handle these cases for all of these 10 other jurisdictions. I would like to now turn it over to Paul Hanna, who will provide some details of the individual's charges, further details regarding the, chefs of the, sh the thefts, and show a few videos of the incidents. Paul. Thank you, Prosecutor O'Malley. <clears throat> Good afternoon. 11 individuals were indicted on 142 counts for stealing 86 vehicles from multiple car dealerships across Northeast Ohio. With cooperation from our local, state, and federal law enforcement partners, we were able to charge and indict these individuals. All 11 individuals have been charged with one count of engaging in a pattern of corrupt activity, aggravated theft, conspiracy, as well as several other charges. The sophisticated yet simple method of operation, the tools these individuals used and had at their disposal, the communication within the group, and the frequency of the break-ins made it clear that these individuals are part of an organized crime ring. Other charges in this indictment include breaking and entering, grand theft, attempted breaking and entering, attempted grand theft, felonious assault, aggravated robbery, robbery, failure to comply, receiving stolen property, obstructing official business, and possessing criminal tools. I will now give you a breakdown of the criminal activity that these individuals engaged in across all 11 counties that are subject to the indictment. As mentioned, these individuals stole from 26 dealerships across 11 counties in 27 different cities. The total estimated value of cars stolen was around $5.1 million dollars and we believe that, that there are many uh, additional vehicles that were stolen as well. As Prosecutor O'Malley stated, this investigation remains ongoing. In several instances, the dealerships were cased prior to the break-in in the morning. In one specific instance, one of the individuals approached the salesman and provided his name. Uh, that salesman then saw the photo of that individual who was later arrested and identified him as the perpetrator. It is clear that several of these stolen vehicles were used in the commission of violent crimes, including an assault on a police officer that occurred on January 5th, 2023, and a drive-by shooting that also occurred on February 12th of 2023. Both of these crimes are in the indictment as well. Also, in some instances, police officers responded to the scene of the break-in. The defendants then proceeded to lead law enforcement on a high-speed pursuit, and those pursuits were terminated. I will now give you a breakdown of the vehicles uh, stolen and were subject to this indictment. We have four Dodge Chargers, 14 Dodge Challengers, one Cadillac, 12 BMWs, one Jeep Wrangler, two Ford Mustangs, 10 Jeep Grand Cherokees, five Land Rovers, one Range Rover, 14 Mercedes, four Audis, two Dodge Rams, one Compass, one Jeep Compass, one Chevy Tahoe, one Ford Expedition, one Kia K5, seven Dodge Durangos, one Porsche, two Jaguars, one Lexus, and one Volvo. Um, I will now give you a breakdown of the counties involved. As stated previously, we had 11 counties targeted. In Cuyahoga County, we had nine cities, Cleveland, Parma, Mayfield Heights, Strongsville, North Olmsted, Bedford, Solon, Euclid, and Brooklyn. We had seven dealerships, 32 cars, with an estimated value of 1.56 million, and we had three residential properties uh, where cars were stolen from the parking lots. In Lorain County, we have one city, that is Hamhurst. We have one dealership, two cars, with an estimated value of $71,980. In Lake County, we have three cities, Willoughby, Menor, and Painesville, three dealerships involved, seven cars, with an estimated total value of $340,164. In Geauga County, we had one city, that is Chardon, one dealership, three cars, total estimated value of 218000 
In Medina County, we had two dealerships, five cars, total estimated value of 423,000. Wayne County, two cities, Dalton and Worcester. We had two dealerships, three cars, 140,000. Portage County, one city, that is Ravenna, one dealership, one car, with an estimated value of 54,000. Ashland County, one city, that is Ashland, one dealership, one car, with an estimated total value of 75,000. Stark County, we have three cities, that's North Canton, Canton and Alliance, three dealerships, five cars, with a total estimated value of 283,000. Summit County, we have three cities, Norton, Akron, Copley Township, four dealerships, 24 cars, estimated value of 1.2 million. Carroll County, one city, that is Malvern, one dealership, one car, with an estimated value of 92,000. I will now show you a couple videos uh, that depict and illustrate the criminal uh, activities that these individuals engaged in. These are from three separate dealerships on three separate dates, uh, showing three separate pers perspectives. These individuals would break into the dealership, and as illustrated here, they would proceed directly to the salesman's desk or the manager's office, and they would start looking for the key fobs. Once they take the key fobs, they would then head directly to the lot and proceed to steal the vehicles. In the second video, to the bottom left of the screen, you will see the suspect approach the uh, service garage door of the dealership and attempt to break in that way. This video is from the same dealership, but on the inside of the service garage. And they would head directly into the office looking for the key fobs. The final video shows the suspects in the vehicle leaving the scene of the dealerships. Projected on the screen here is a map of the dealerships that are named as victims in this indictment. As you can see, these break-ins spanned across Northeast Ohio, and this map shows how large of the criminal enterprise and how far uh, the area that they've affected um, during this uh, criminal behavior. I'll now turn it back to Prosecutor O'Malley, who will uh, offer some closing remarks. I would just like to say today is the first step and putting a stop to this criminal organization. The investigation continues, and we will hold the, all of those responsible accountable. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. One of the dealerships named as a victim is uh, North Olmstead Mercedes. That's where Sean Watson's truck was stolen from. Is his truck one of those that was involved in this one? 
Yes, yes it would be. Now, obviously, based upon the listing of the automobiles uh, that you saw on the screen, um, they were targeting very high-end automobiles with a, a great deal of uh, value, and that was consistent throughout the uh, thefts throughout the dealerships. They would scope out the dealerships prior, and then they would return and break in and steal the cars that they preferred. What did they do with the cars? I'm curious why. Why you want to talk about it right. lately? So, <clears throat> from the investigation again, because this is an ongoing investigation, I, I don't want to disclose, um, but generally these cars were sold and they were used in the commission of other uh, violent felonies. As you can see in the indictment, there are at least three separate incidents of violent uh, crimes in which these cars were used uh, to facilitate uh, that crime. Have, have they been recovered, any of these cars? The majority of the cars have been recovered, yes. Any rough estimate how many of the majority? Of the 86, I'm talking 60, 70? You want to work out of the 120, or are you working out of 86? So overall, um, even though the indictment includes 86 vehicles, overall we believe approximately 126 vehicles have been stolen. Uh, we believe uh, approximately 26 vehicles remain unrecovered at this point. So they That's were very of the good. 126. That's of the overall 126, yes. And those were stolen in the same incidents, or are they additional? They were stolen some of these incidents, but also in additional incidents that are not subject to this indictment. You mentioned sophisticated but simple. Give people an idea of what you mean by that. Like, it seems pretty basic. Go case it out, break in, steal a key fob, steal a car. Is it really that easy? Well, we would like to believe that uh, dealerships have increased their security, so it's my expectation at this point in time that it's not as easy as it used to be. How did you guys catch these guys? Again, at this point, because this is an ongoing investigation, I don't want to disclose the evidence that the investigating officers relied on um, to conduct this investigation. Are all 11 in jail currently? Um, four were prior. They picked up five today, and there's two remain um, outstanding in uh, the authorities and law enforcement agencies are actively looking for those individuals. That was five prior? Or Four were prior, were previously five. in custody. Five were picked up today and two remain um, at large. Were they in custody for these thefts or other crimes? These thefts and other crimes. Yeah, both. These thefts and other thefts. Are they all from the Cleveland area or are they literally from across all, the country? All the suspects are from the Cleveland area. Any of them employees at any of these dealerships doing these inside jobs? And not that I'm aware of. But certainly individuals, and I know we've all seen uh, these, these break-ins have been hitting the news uh, for the last six, seven months. And um, these certainly these players were a large part of the issue. Did any of the incidents involve firearms, use of firearms? Do you want to answer so we have the one incident uh, in which uh, the Avis rental at the airport, the, a firearm was used um, in that uh, robbery. One of the vehicles stolen from the Avis rental at the airport was then used in the commission of uh, another dealership break-in. So yes, in, one, in that instance, a firearm was used. And that was like against a clerk or employee there? It was against the, the, uh, the gatekeeper. Are there mug shots? Those can be requested from the Sheriff's Department. Are there any other questions? Do you believe there are other uncharged suspects or unindicted suspects well, still out there? Or uh, that it's, 11 it's, are charged? it's certainly reasonable to expect that when we continue this investigation that there will be other individuals who may not have been as involved as some of these individuals because uh, some were involved in many and others were not involved in uh, as much. So, you know, they all have different levels of culpability in these in regard to these 30 particular incidents, 32 particular incidents. So, um, but it would not be uh, shocking to find more individuals involved. What message do you hope this sends? I think the message that has got to be sent first and foremost is um, this will not be tolerated, but also to the dealerships that, and I think they're aware of this, 
the last thing they wanted to have done is $90,000 cars driven off their lots. So I think there has been a lesson learned um, in the automotive dealership community, but also that, as, as we always say, we will continue to look, we will continue to hunt, we will find and hold those responsible for committing the crimes in our community, and that's the message uh, in this case as well. Do you believe any of these are tied into the whole Kia Hyundai theft ring as well, or completely separate? Well, the sad reality is these guys were more sophisticated, one could say, than the Kia Hyundai's. I mean, the Kia Hyundai's is almost like, um, I hate to say it, but it's almost like taking a shopping cart at the grocery store. Um, these were a little bit more complex. Any, any more context you can provide on how it seems pretty significant, widespread? I mean, have you seen something like this before? We have not seen, at least in my tenure, I have not seen a similar incident where a group of individuals are targeting dealerships to this extent throughout multi-counties in Northeast Ohio. Having the same group of individuals from Cleveland traveling down to Carroll County is unusual. But, you know, as, as law enforcement became aware of their activities, certainly it made sense for them to start uh, expanding their boundaries. What would you say to the public who's going to say, well, car dealerships get all this effort put into recovering their cars, my car got stolen out from in front of my house and police came to the report and that was it. Well, I believe law enforcement uh, puts forth uh, efforts on all stolen vehicles and as we all know in our community and not just our community across the country and in particular the Hyundai and Kia issue, um, those cars were manufactured with flaws and I would hope that nationally there is some resolution that requires that manufacturer of both, I think it's the same ownership of Hyundai and Kia, but certainly somebody on a national level needs to hold that company accountable and require them and mandate that they fix those defective vehicles that are so easy to steal. Um, there has been simple security measures that have been put on most cars over the last 10 to 15 years and why they were not included in high end days and Kias, only that manufacturer could answer, but I guess my guess would be they were cutting cost and they have created this predicament that our community and most communities have seen regarding the thefts of high end and Kias. So while those are important, dealing with people who are targeting dealerships and stealing cars, those are also important. So. Just to summarize, I believe both types of theft are critical. They both need to be solved, and we need to hold all those responsible accountable. Did they sell the cars in Cleveland? Did they travel? Some cars were sold in Cleveland. Some cars were sold outside of Cleveland. Including at least one out of state? Uh, yes, at least one vehicle was sold outside of the state of Ohio. Which state was that? Uh, Michigan. Were there any apparent efforts to export them, get them across international borders? I don't have I don't have any information that that occurred. But again, these as you, as you saw from the videos, they and you saw from the list of cars that were stolen, these were all pretty much high end vehicles with a, a great deal of value that they were seeking. And um, were they selling them for anywhere close to the? Price. It doesn't appear so. It doesn't appear that uh, certainly they were not selling $90,000 scars for $90,000. Um, it was a fraction of that amount. Do you believe the people who were purchasing these vehicles had reason to believe they were not purchased in a, an upstanding manner? I would say if you're spending $5,000 on a $70,000 car, you got one heck of a deal. Is that what was happening in these cases? Uh, in, the, in the particular cases I'm aware of, it was in that, that area. So they weren't necessarily purely innocent victims who were defrauded by these? I, I would agree with that. That yes, these people, if you're buying a car of that value for that little, then you know there's an issue. Any further questions? Okay, this concludes our press conference. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.